Hey guys, today we are looking at a great project from the fine folks over at the OpenStick community. This is the USB pass-through board, and it is a small add-on board designed for use with the RP2040 Advanced Breakout Board and other RP2040 based devices. So what exactly does this thing do for us? Well, it allows a user to authenticate their controller on the PS4 or the PS5 for use either natively on the PS4 or as an arcade stick on the PS5 for any titles that support legacy PS4 arcade sticks. It accomplishes this in part by utilizing a compatible dongle or controller to authenticate. The one we'll be utilizing here is a Mayflash Magic Boots V1.1. That means that now there is a cheaper alternative to a Brook Fusion or a PS5 daughter board upgrade to enable certain games on the PS5. Instead of something at that $120 price point, this solution potentially clocks in around that $50 mark. I'll walk you through this device, how to get your own, and how to put it all together. Let's get started. So the pass-through device is this module, which gets placed atop the RP2040 Advanced Breakout Board. As such, there are three separate JST 2.002 pin connectors, which allow you to link the USB pass-through device with the board. Any length cables will do, so long as they are straight connection cables. You don't have to mount the USB pass-through board on the ABB, you can mount it anywhere you have room in your case. This board shown here is actually an earlier version, so not exactly the same as the updated pass-through device you'll find on GitHub. The new ones have removed the 4-pin JST 2.00 connector to keep it even simpler. The process is still all the same though, but I'll try to display comparable pictures of the revised product as we go along. The first cable will be connected between the port labeled V5 out, which is located just below the USB-C port, to the V5 in on the USB breakout board. The second cable will need to be connected from the D plus out port on the USB pass-through board to any of the option slots labeled 1 through 5. Then, the third cable will need to be connected from the D minus out port on the USB pass-through option port, which comes immediately after the one chosen for the D plus out option port. The ones used in this example are option 5 and option 6. You'll also see two 3mm standoff holes, which allow you to screw it directly onto the board. You can do it now or after you finish installing the firmware. Now that everything is mounted and connected, we need to look at our firmware situation. Start by plugging a USB cable into the advanced breakout board. Then, to prompt web config mode, hold down the web config button and plug the other end of the USB cable into your computer. Navigate to this in your web browser to access the web configuration page. Check to see what firmware you are running. Note that for this USB pass-through to work, you need to be running at least version 0.7.4. This one here needs to be updated. To do that, unplug the PCB from the computer. Then, while holding the boot button this time around, plug it back in. It is now in boot cell mode, and you should see the RP2040 Advanced Breakout Board come up as a removable drive on your computer. Then, just download the newest version of the firmware here. It will download as a UF2 file, and then you can just drag and drop it onto that removable drive. The copy takes a few seconds and then you're done. You've updated the firmware. You can confirm that by returning to the web configuration page. Now comes the exciting part. We need to set up the controller to work on a PS5 as a PS4 fight stick. While on that web config page, click on the settings tab. From here, click on the input mode drop down and select PS4. When you do, you'll see two other options appear. Since we want the USB pass-through to allow the breakout board to be used on the PS5 for games that support legacy PS4 fight sticks, we need to change the controller drop-down to arcade stick. Once this is done, you can scroll down to the bottom of the page and press the save button. The last thing we need to do in web config is turn on USB pass-through. From the configuration tab, click on add-ons configuration. Now this will take you to the main add-ons page. Just scroll down here until you see the section called PS Pass-Through. There is a little toggle switch on the right hand side. Click it to turn the PS Pass-Through on. Once this is turned on, you will be able to set the D plus pin that the USB Pass-Through board will use. Now in the D plus box, type in 28. You will see that the D minus is automatically set to 29. The V5 stuff is optional and we don't need to mess with it. So again, scroll down to the bottom of the page and press the save button. Once you've completed the earlier steps, you can press the reboot button in the top right. 
it will have a small pop-up asking if you want to reboot into USB and we're going to press the controller button. Once pressed, the device will reboot and will show up as a controller on your computer. The final step is to connect the device you are planning to use to authenticate with the USB pass-through board. In this example, I'm using a Mayflash Magic Boots V1.1. I bought this one for about 25 bucks, but the price looks to have increased slightly on Amazon recently. However, once the Magic Boots is connected, you're done with the install. You can hook it up to your stick and play some PS5 fighting games. If you have the initiative to do it all yourself, you can likely put this together for about 50 bucks. But if this isn't in your comfort zone, the MSRP for this pass-through device is around 10 bucks, a Magic Boots around 25, and a vendor-produced advanced breakout board, 35. So even if you can't accomplish this yourself, you can still likely get one all in from a vendor for 70 bucks, which is still cheaper than a Brook Universal. There is also an updated all-in-one board in development, which will drop in the coming weeks. Now, several vendors will undoubtedly start making their own pass-throughs because the files are free to use on GitHub, but if you are comfortable working with a PCB assembly service and don't mind ordering five units at a time, you could feasibly cut out the middleman and do a lot of this yourself. Included on the GitHub page is the Gerber file for the design of the board, a BOM file for the list of parts to be assembled, and a PNP file for the placement. Just read things thoroughly. PCBWay is the sponsor of today's video, and they are an option for your PCB assembly needs. They are also currently running their sixth project design contest, the goal being to encourage participants to engage in open source and innovative projects in an effort to inspire more individuals to become a member of the electronics community. So check that out if open source PCB design interests you. Anyway, huge thanks to the train and the whole OpenStick community for the progress made in these PCB areas. With these reduced costs associated with the barrier to entry in making controllers, I feel fight sticks are getting more and more attainable for everyone. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.